Welcome to Breakthrough Success. I am your host, Mark Birdie, the content marketing expert, bringing you three new episodes each week where I and top-level guests teach you how to take your business to the next level and achieve your breakthrough. Hello, Breakthrough Success listeners. I just wanted you all to know before the episode actually starts, I've been working a little bit behind the scenes to give you something really special. So a while ago, I wrote my book, Content Marketing Secrets, which helps people create, promote, and optimize their content for growth and revenue. And I just put the finishing touches together to offer that for free to anyone who is interested. So if you want your free copy of Content Marketing Secrets, all you have to do is head over to markgaberti.com slash book. Now, let's jump right into the episode. If you're hearing conversation about, okay, how do I grow my business? How do I do all these different things? A lot of people uh, talk about influencers. They talk about uh, if so-and-so shared my message, if so-and-so was able to uh, tweet this or impart some wisdom on me. Uh, influencers are becoming a very important part uh, for a marketing strategy, but you also have to consider, as we're going to talk about in this episode, that influencers are people too, and you don't want to approach them saying, uh, hey, what can I get from you? How can you help me grow? But rather getting them to notice you and building a very firm relationship with these influencers. So in this episode, we're going to talk about influencer marketing and being able to build those healthy relationships with some of the top influencers in your niche. So today's guest is an influencer marketing strategist who helps you attract the right clients and build a magnificent business that thrives over the long term. She is the author of the number one bestseller Beyond Influencer Marketing, Create connections with influential people to build authority, grow your list, and boost revenue. And in that book, she shows you her proven system to build long-lasting connections with influencers. Today's guest for episode 274 of the Breakthrough Success Podcast is none other than Cloris Kylie. Cloris, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. What an honor to be here, Mark. Thank you for that intro. Loved it. Cloris, it is really great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming. And I mean, influencers, there's just a lot of us. And it's not just an influencer where it's like, oh, this person has a million followers. It's also that micro influencer, that person who maybe has a few hundred or a few thousand people, but they are hyper engaged in their message. So influencer could take on several different definitions. But uh, before we get into how we can le- uh, go beyond influencer marketing and build relationships, I'm wondering what exactly got you started uh, on this? Like, why do you see this as something very important? Just share a little backstory about how you got started. Definitely, Mark. I, I feel that connecting with influencers really saved my business because I was at a point that I was working 14 hours a day, creating blog posts. I had a radio show uh, uh, where I would create solo episodes, but basically for personal development. I was posting quotes. I was creating all this stuff on social media. And uh, it was like crickets, right? Nobody seemed to care. And I was just so, um, just so overwhelmed and so disappointed by my results that I remember one morning waking up uh, three in the morning and saying, you know what? I give up. I quit. This is just not worth it. And all I wanted to do was to cash out of my savings and just travel around the world and take a break. I just couldn't take it anymore. Uh, and thank goodness I came back to my senses that day and said, okay, there has to be, you know, a different way to do this. And uh, since I had, I was open to those new opportunities and possibilities. I started to see how people who had online radio shows and podcasts actually had guests on their shows, right? Uh, I started to notice guest posts and I said, wow, you know, how come I didn't think about this before? I could just have the same content I'm creating and then share it on an existing platform. And that's what I need to do. So I started to bring in guests who would share my, my podcast, who then invited me to their shows. I started to post guest articles on large websites such as Tiny Buddha. You know, at the time, again, I was doing personal development and that really changed the game. Um, And those first influencer connections then led 
to new connections. Um, so that's how, you know, right now I feel like I have this network of supporters, people who really care about me and my success. And that's how I continue to grow my business. And I mean, I really see that butterfly effect as well in my business because like you're doing all these interviews, you're uh, posting all these guest posts and you're really reaching out to a lot of people. And you mentioned something like, why didn't I think about this earlier? And I mean, now you're doing it, but there are a lot of people who may be listening to this who, oh, I'm not necessarily doing this right now. This is something that I could be doing. The sparks are starting to form. So I'm wondering if you can, I mean, I know this might be a little bit of a difficult question, but uh, why do you think you started a little later in the process with this really great approach as compared to just going right out of the gate with it? Is it like you didn't know it or you didn't think it was possible for you? Like, what do you think caused that delay in the beginning? For me, it was basically that I didn't, I didn't realize it. It's when like when you have something right in front of you, but uh, you just don't see it, right? When you're looking for your keys and you look everywhere and the keys are right there on the kitchen counter, right? You don't see them. So I think that's what was happening. I was new at the, you know, online marketing and promoting my, my message online at the time. Uh, and I just didn't know. I didn't see it. Um, so I think once you, when you start focusing on what's wrong, right? You're like, okay, nobody uh, read my article. Nobody listened to my show. Um, you're not really looking for a solution. You're just focusing on what's wrong. And I think that's what was happening for me. So I think if you're listening and if you haven't thought about this before, well, this is great because now it's, it's right there. It's right in front of you. So it's just a matter of taking one one step and get started to connect with influencers. And if you think that way also, where it's like, oh, no one's viewed my episode, no one's read my blog post, you are reinforcing a negative loop inside of yourself where uh, you're at a point where you're less, let me find a solution and more, why can't I just be this person who's getting all this traffic? So you don't want to enforce any negative loops either by thinking that way. So that's something uh, really good you pointed out there where it's, uh, like, okay, I have this problem, but the way you approach it really makes a big difference. And now, I mean, like, um, you're definitely seeing influencer marketing, like you're reaching out, you're building a lot of relationships, you're guest posting, you're doing all that fun stuff. And for some people, like it's uh, easier than others to build relationships with. But for that really busy influencer, that one who's like getting bombarded with emails, how do we build relationships with those types of influencers? Well, the first step, Mark, is to realize that, of course, as you said earlier in the uh, beginning of the show, you said, okay, it's not about asking people, what can you do for me? But it's about okay, trying to find a way to deliver value to them, right? It's the whole go-giver philosophy. Um, so how do you deliver value to top influencers? You might be thinking, okay, I'm not ready. I don't really have like a, a huge list to promote this person. I don't have a huge revenue. Like what can I do for them? But believe it or not, if you just do small things that over time, right? It's not just one time, but you support this person on a continuous basis by number one, sharing with them how they have changed your life. You know, something as simple as that as sending them a handwritten letter about, you know, their message, how they have impacted your life. Um, and then just telling them how uh, they could maybe improve their business. Because I, sometimes I get emails from people who say, oh, Cloris, you know, I noticed there's a broken link on your website. I'm like, oh, oh, thank you so much. I actually appreciate that. Uh, or give me feedback about my show, about my podcast. I appreciate that, you know. So things like that, or if you are on social media, you might not have a ton of listeners or not listeners, but followers. But if you share their content with a, an insightful comment, they start to notice you, right? So it's about getting noticed. And once you are noticed, then uh, you can just take the relationship to the next level. If you have a platform, you have a podcast, then you invite them to be on your show. If you have a, a virtual summit, same story. If you have a blog, maybe you write an article about them. That's what I did um, for uh, one influencer, actually. I was really inspired by his message. And uh, uh, it was a, a kind of a weird fit because he's a survival expert. Uh, but I think that survival skills 
can be applied to business as well, right? We want to survive in business. So I wrote this article. I was really inspired. And I shared it with, with him on Twitter. We didn't know each other at the time. He was a host of a TV show, and, and he loved it. Uh, so he loved it so much that he shared it everywhere. Uh, and then we created this friendship um, that he actually wrote a, a story for my book, Beyond Influencer Marketing, about how he grew his business thanks to guest posting. So, you know, it all it just happens that way. You you support somebody, you show them that you actually care about them and their message, and they respond. And does everybody respond? No. But, you know, then it's, it's about, okay, when do I give up and when do I keep supporting this person? And you will know when, when it's time. And I mean, so many great insights and they're just, and I really like that idea where you're just trying to get in front of the influence, you get them to notice you and that handwritten letter, uh, writing about them, really good ideas. And I want to touch on the handwritten letter a little more. That's something that so few people are going to do. I right. mean, I would need like a lot I and mean, like I, I get so many emails, like I've maybe gotten thousands of emails. I was going to try and like say something like counting them in my hand, but like I need a lot of people to do that based on emails I've gotten. But I'd say I've received like, I'm estimating this, maybe like 10,000 emails from people uh, like <laughs> trying to build a relationship or something like that. But mm -hmm. maybe less than a hundred uh, have written to me. And right. of those like less than hundred people, it tends to be the same people over yeah. and over again. And those are people who I also have really strong relationships with. And it's harder to miss a handwritten note than it is with uh, the inbox. And the inbox is like, we read inboxes like LIFO, like sorry for throwing in the accounting term for mm -hmm. uh, anyone who's afraid of numbers, but uh, that basically means last in, first out. You're not starting by reading the email that you received a week ago. You're starting by reading the email you received five minutes ago. So. Uh, like doing those things, not just sending emails, uh, can really put you in front of people's radars. And I mean, a lot of great strategies in there. Uh, but one of the things that I want to also ask you is that like a theme that we've mentioned is that, um, it's not, how can I use you? It's how can I help you? But there is a point where, uh, you may want to ask them like, Hey, um, I'm working on this product. I'm wondering if I could use your help or something like that. Um, how do you get comfortable with making that ask, even though you know what you know and you don't want to like cut off the relationship because you're asking for help in something? Yeah, well, it's, a, it's actually a great question uh, because the key is to not ask too early in the relationship, right? I've had people reach out to me at all, all points in our relationship from the first contact, the first time we uh, email each other or, or talk to each other, the first thing they ask is, hey, can you promote my product, right? So of course, uh, I'm, I'm not willing to do that because I don't really know this person, right? Um, and then I get people who just wait a, a really, really long time. Uh, so the, the key is when you feel that this person actually knows you well, that they really have appreciated uh, you, know, you and, and they would be able to recognize your name, uh, then it's okay to ask. And uh, the way you ask, it has to be in a way that actually provides value to their audience. So for example, if you're connecting with a, a top podcaster, right, he doesn't, it's really hard to, to be a guest on his show, um, then you have to position your pitch, your idea in a way that delivers value to their audience, something that hasn't been done before. And you only know that by really listening to this show right? Knowing exactly what he has done before uh, and then proposing something different and saying that in your communication. Hey, you know, uh, I noticed that you haven't covered this topic. I would love to explore that for your audience. So it becomes, it's not just an ask, but hey, I'm still delivering value to your audience. If you want to collaborate with somebody so they actually promote your product, then I would say the, the, the relationship has to be at a mature point Right, the, the person actually knows you and recognizes you. Uh, when I've reached to uh, top influencers to to promote me, to send referrals my way, um, then I say, you know, I, I noticed that you have a, a link on your page to request uh, coaches. You know, I'm a coach. I would love to help your audience. Uh, and then I just say it in that way. 
Um, and they're very receptive because they know that I have supported them for the long term. So what I would say, if you want to connect with an influencer, any influencer, whether it is a top influencer or a niche influencer, uh, then go with uh, to the relationship with the desire to help, but also with a short-term and a long-term objective for the relationship. So a short-term objective, depending on the influencer, might be that they just uh, get reply yes to your LinkedIn connection uh, request, and then they actually reply to your emails. Could be something as simple as that. And then the long-term objective could be that they have you on their podcast, they publish your article, um, they collaborate with you and, and share your products. Uh, but if, if you have those objectives in mind, then at least you know where you're going, right? You have a, a clear path. If you just go into the relationships, go, oh, I just want to connect with them. Um, and then uh, you have the opportunity of them actually asking you how they can help you. You will be at a loss for words, right? You will not be prepared. Something that happened to me, Mark, when I, I would connect with these uh, top influencers, we were talking and they would say, well, Chloris, what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, um, I wasn't uh, prepared. So it's like, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. Right. So I, I lost that opportunities. But if you're ready, if you have a clear idea, then you'll know exactly what to say. And just to back up some of Chloris's points and like, I mean, I've had similar experiences where like there was someone who literally asked me the same thing, like, oh, what can I do to help you? And I was like stumped, like I had no idea what to say. And I feel like if you go in like uh, anticipating questions like what can I do to help you and having an answer for that, you will be ready for those moments because you never know when that moment's going to come. You definitely <laughs> uh, want to have something to say when something like that comes up. And again, that theme of being helpful something that is uh, a strong theme in this episode in influencer marketing in general. I'll just mention really quick, John Corcoran, uh, he was on Breakthrough Success and during the post conversation, he said, hey, your iTunes link is leading to the Libsyn link. You should have it lead to your blog instead. So he did that level of research to um, come up with something actionable that I did that has been able uh, allowed me to increase my traffic. So little things like that can uh, really go a long way for building a relationship. And um, I know we've talked a lot about, okay, how do we reach out to influencers? How do we build a relationship? Uh, what's your advice on how we can become influencers? Yeah, that's, you know, what happens, Mark, once you start to connect with influencers, uh, th there's one thing that immediately happens, right? You see yourself as somebody who can achieve what they have achieved because it's all about the people you hang out with, right? You're like, okay, wow, you know, they did it. They have this story. They uh, they started from scratch and now here they are. I can do the same. So that's the first thing that happens. Once you feel that you're capable of achieving something, that's when you're actually able to do that. Otherwise, if you don't see yourself doing or achieving your goal, your goals, you will not do it. Uh, and, and once you have that empowerment, then you can, by interacting with them, come up with new ideas for you to have your own platform, for you to build your own audience. And the fact that they're sharing your message with their audience allows you to do that much faster. So for example, if you have a podcast, what is the best way to grow that podcast? By being a guest on other people's podcasts, right? Because you know their audience already loves podcasts, so, so why not share yours? Uh, if you love to write and you have a blog, you know, do a guest post and then people will go to your blog, right, to read it. So then the more influencers you connect with, then the more people will go to your platform and then you will become a person of influence too. And an important theme you touched on, like if you're trying to get more people on your podcast, writing guest posts isn't the best approach. It's getting on other podcasts because uh, you're listening to this podcast right now. And if we say, hey, check out this podcast, you're more likely to do that than someone who's only on YouTube and doesn't listen to podcasts. So it's important to reach the people who are using or being active on the medium that you are also using. And uh, you get the whole authority by association uh, factor. But uh, one of the things that you get with being an influencer is all this extra exposure, but that doesn't mean you've necessarily made it. That doesn't mean uh, you're 
making revenue because there are some influencers who a lot of people know them, but they're not making uh, as much revenue as they could with their audience. Uh, so I'm wondering, Cloris, if you could share with us, you're an influencer. How do we uh, monetize what we have going on for us right now? Yeah, that's true. That's, that's a great point. Actually, one of my connections, his name is Evan Carmichael. And uh, he grew this YouTube channel to help entrepreneurs. It's, it's a great channel. I mean, he, he posts, I don't know how many videos a day. And he's grown it to over a million people who are really engaged. In, you know, but at the beginning, he, um, he wasn't really offering anything to that audience. Okay, So how did he monetize that channel at the beginning? What he was doing was using that channel just to build authority and land speaking engagements and consulting opportunities with large companies, uh, just because he was building authority through the channel. Now what he does is he actually is focusing more on growing his list and then having uh, three days, uh, three day retreats to help entrepreneurs. So it's more like his own product. It took him a while to get there. I would say if you are going to connect with influencers, you definitely have to plan uh, to grow your list from day one. So that's why in the book and beyond influencer marketing, I talk about your list building system as part of that foundation though, to get tangible results out of your connections with influencers. And that includes to have, of course, a clear avatar description so you know how to serve these people. Um, then you have to have a lead magnet, a landing page that actually converts, that is optimized, and that is easy to consume because when you're being introduced to an audience, if you have a webinar, for example, or a series of videos, is um, it requires a lot of time to consume and it might not be as effective as having a quick download, like a PDF, a checklist, something that people can just join your, your list. And once you have joined, uh, I mean, grown your list, then you, you should have a series of emails, a welcome a series of emails uh, to then send people to the next step in the journey. So when you create all this stuff, you have to have the end journey for your ideal client in mind and ask yourself, you know, what is it that I want them to do? Do I want them to book a consultation with me? Do I want them to uh, purchase maybe a low ticket offer I have? What is it? And then with that in mind, then create those series of, of emails and communications for your new subscribers. But if you don't have this in mind uh, or, or create it, and then you go and, and connect with influencers, yes, it'll be great. It'll be empowering. Uh, you will build authority, but you will not get those tangible results. And I really like that theme of growing your email list because uh, you need to have an email list to, I mean, it's not the only way, but when you hear about people saying, okay, this is how you make revenue. This is how you grow your online business. A lot of the conversation hits upon that email list. So whether it's a PDF or video, you need to have some way to grow your email list in a funnel that follows up uh, saying, okay, like building relationship and leading up to one of your products or services at some point. But with all this knowledge, I feel like uh, a lot of people, they have a general idea of how to become an influencer. They have a general knowledge of how to do these different things because there's so much knowledge on the web. But what do you believe holds most people back from being able to reach that influencer status and monetizing it? What I would say is, it's usually a, a mindset issue, right? Uh, you might think oh, that you're not ready, uh, especially when you want to reach out to other people. You might think, oh, you know, I have to wait to have X or Y done. Uh, that's when I'll be ready, right? So it's just, uh, it could be just a way of of us to mask uh, the fear, the fear of rejection, really, the fear of failure, uh, which is a possibility. I'm not going to say that every time I've reached out to an influencer, they have uh, welcomed me with open arms. No, I have been rejected. Uh, but it's just is allowing yourself to be okay with that and say, okay, well, it's not a good match and I'll move on, you know, and, and move on to the next person, somebody who can really appreciate you uh, and see your value. And this, and now when you want to become an influencer, then I think that fear of rejection also comes into play. You're like, okay, what if I put myself out there and, and I share my message and, uh, you know, people don't love it or or even worse, they attack me, right? And with social media and, and people behaving in a, in a really uh, different way from what they would do in, in, in real life, right? Uh, face to face, 
uh, you see all those trolls and it's just scary. You know, I understand it's scary, but uh, if you don't do it, then, uh, you know, you'll be 80 years old at the end of your life and, and just saying, oh my God, you know, I, I was never able to share my gifts with the world. And, and you don't want that. You don't want to look back and regret that you never did what you loved just because you were afraid. Uh, so it's just a matter of just take one step, do what, you know, be yourself. It's just, you know, say your message. Some people will love it. Some people will hate it. And that's okay. And with that one step at a time, you do build a lot of momentum. And I mean, that could just be something as simple as like typing in a Google search. Like you don't want to make it too hard for yourself to take action because uh, when you throw all these different steps in it, you feel like it's so complicated and so unlikely for you that you don't even pursue it. But if you really do break it into those steps and have the mindset where, okay, I hit this step, I hit the other step, and I really believe I can do this that's when the magic is going to start to happen. But um, in that journey, there's going to be certain challenges along the way. And that's why like the mindset, as you mentioned, very important. The way we go through certain challenges that we face really has an impact on our mindset. So with that in mind, I'm wondering if you could share with us one big challenge you faced in your uh, business journey and a powerful lesson you learned during that challenge. I would say the biggest challenge was for me to feel that everything I was doing was not working. Um, I remember uh, at the beginning of my business online, I just wanted to, to figure things out on my own. And I think it's something that many of us do when we're entrepreneurs. We feel like we know our stuff, right? I have a marketing background, so I said, I can figure this out. Um, so I try to do it all uh, without really seeking expert advice. And I failed. I failed in so many ways. First, I wanted to serve everyone. Um, then I created this product that I thought nobody was uh, had nobody had in the market, and there was a reason for that, right? It wasn't wanted. <laughs> uh, so things like that, I would just, you know, create a program without asking for feedback. All those things, and uh, all of that kind of like came to a, to that point that I was overwhelmed. You know, working so hard, creating content, it wasn't working. And at that point, I I could have quit uh, because I was that burned out. You know, I really, that's what I wanted. And it was a thought that happened that day I, I shared before, but it had been in my mind for a while. I said, well, maybe this, this is not working. It's, it's just not for me. Um, so I think the biggest challenge for me was to say, I'm going to give it another try. You know, I'm not going to quit. And, uh, it took a lot of courage and I was really afraid. And I'm not going to say that now I don't, I, I, there, are, there aren't days where I'm afraid. You know, I said, oh my God, what if things are going well? What if they don't in the future? You know, I sometimes I question myself, but it's a matter of, of getting away from those thoughts and instead doing more of what works, keep working hard because yes, it's hard work uh, and then you'll see results. Uh, but I think the, the drive to keep going will only come if you're doing something that you truly love. Mm -hmm. If you're doing something just to make money or, you know, because you feel that's, that's where the opportunities are, but your heart is not in it, you will quit. You know, it has to be something that you truly, truly love. And I'm, I agree with all those points where, like, I love hosting the Breakthrough Success podcast. On some days, like, it wasn't getting any exposure. I mean, I feel like every content creator can relate to that initial stage where, oh, my episodes aren't getting any downloads or my blog isn't getting any traffic. But if you really love it and uh, you put in the time and you believe in yourself, uh, you could eventually get these big download numbers that you want. You get the influence. You can have the, I believe you should also focus more on the impact you have on others than uh, the impact the work will have on you because I feel like the moment we get absorbed in ourselves is the moment we really start to go downhill and another way that a lot of people go downhill is by uh, they stop learning and I know that's not you because you're listening to this podcast you're probably listening to some other episodes on this podcast you probably have a few other podcasts to listen to so that is definitely not you you are an achiever you are learning a lot of different things so uh, with learning in mind, Cloris, I'm wondering if you could share with us three books that you believe will have a positive impact on us. Well, the first one, definitely The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. Uh, the philosophy there is the philosophy 
in my book, Beyond Influencer Marketing, which is about that. It's just about delivering value first. Um, I love Expert Secrets and Dotcom Secrets by Russell Brunson, uh, especially Dotcom Secrets. So definitely have that, uh, you know, close to you is, is what I've used actually to, um, to grow my business as well. And of course, I have to say Beyond Influencer Marketing, right? That's my book. <laughs> Cloris, thank you for those great book recommendations. We'll throw all those in the show notes, marktoberry.com slash E274. Bob Burke was a guest on the show, so we will throw that in the show notes as well. Russell Brunson, someday it will happen. Uh, but we will also throw in Content Marketing Secrets. The audio book just came out for anyone interested. So again, all those will be in the show notes, marktoberry.com slash E274. And before we wrap up this episode, Cloris, I've asked you several questions throughout our time together, but what do you believe is one question that we need to be asking ourselves more often? I think the, the number one question is, am I following my my truth? Am I really uh, doing something because I believe in it or because I feel like I should or I'm supposed to? Uh, every decision, you, every day you make a ton of decisions. And if those decisions are aligned with who you truly are and not you're not making decisions out of obligations, uh, then you'll be successful. So just every time you make a decision, ask yourself, uh, is this aligned with who I really am? Cloris, thank you for sharing with us that great question. All of your insights throughout our time together. I don't know about you, but um, I'm really wanting to get noticed by a lot of influencers. Cloris has a really great resource for us. 15 ways to get noticed by influencers and start a relationship with them to grow your business. Sounds like something that you definitely want to check out. Uh, that is at www.cloriskiley.com slash influencer. Uh, Cloris, again, it was such a pleasure to have you on the show. Before we go, um, like I already mentioned that resource, you can just double down, let us know a little bit more about it and some of the other places we can find you as well. Thanks so much, Mark. Yes, uh, well, the influencer guide basically has 15 ways you can get noticed by influencers. So as we were talking about before, you know, if you have a top influencer, how do you uh, get on their radar, right? So this guide will give you some good ideas uh, so you can get started. And uh, you can connect with me at chloriskiley.com. Uh, you will see a link to check out my podcast as well. We have great guests and, uh, you know, lots of inspiration for you to get started, to take that first step and uh, create a magnificent business. Cloris, awesome stuff during this episode. And again, all those will be in the show notes. Uh, but once again, it was such a pleasure to have you on Breakthrough Success. Well, thank you, Mark. It's a big honor. How does over 100 retweets per day sound to you? My free ebook, 27 Ways to Get More Retweets on Twitter, has you covered. I use the methods within this ebook to get over 10,000 retweets every single quarter to learn.